So good afternoon. I'd like to thank everyone for being here. And uh, as we get started, I'd like to introduce uh, the first lady of the great free state of Florida, Casey DeSantis. All right, thank you, Sheriff. Well, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be back in Jacksonville. And, uh, you know, I, I'm here for uh, one big reason. Uh, I want people to know, you know, obviously as the First Lady of the State of Florida, uh, particularly as a mother of three young children, I'm deeply concerned about what would happen to the future of this state if Amendment 3 were to pass. Let's be clear about what this is. This is about corporate greed. This is one company that has put in over $100 million into this initiative, a company that's traded on the Canadian Stock Exchange, not because they care about the well-being of Floridians, they care about families, they care about our children. They're doing this for one reason. Why do you invest $100 million? Because they want a return on their investment. This is about making money for one corporation. They, they say that this Amendment 3, this is about freedom, this is about the free state of Florida, which they've hijacked. If this were about freedom, then why, when they wrote this constitutional amendment, did they specifically write in here that you can only use their product? In this amendment, it is illegal to still grow marijuana at your home. And by the way, if you get injured using their product, they gave themselves liability protections. You cannot sue them. So if you have a seizure using their product that they say that you can only use under the language that was written in Amendment 3, you cannot sue them. You have no civil recourse against them. For those folks, and I understand, who say, well, listen, I need it for, for whatever reason. Perhaps I need it for a medical reason. We right now have a regulated medical marijuana market. We have over 900,000 people who have marijuana cards. Um, that is up and running and that is in use in the state of Florida. This, again, is for one corporation who spent a lot of money so that they could have a market share in perpetuity. And let's be clear about this too, because this is a constitutional amendment. It's not something being done statutorily through the legislature, going through committee hearings, through the House and the Senate, coming to a consensus. This is something that would be in the state constitution for practically ever. And the legislature would have very little impact, if at all, to be able to regulate any of this. They also say, you know, this again is all about freedom. That's what we're trying to do. We're investing $100 million because we believe this in the goodness of our hearts. We just want to do good. Nobody spends $100 million because they want to do good, but they use it in the frame of freedom. Okay, what about the freedom of the people who don't want their rights infringed by somebody showing up next to them smoking marijuana? Because under this constitutional amendment, there are no limitations on public use. So what does that mean for you at home? That means that wherever you go, in any place, at any time, across the state of Florida, people would have a constitutional right to be able to smoke it. So think about that. If you're sitting at your child's baseball game, you're at the school, you're at a playground, you're at a park, you're at a theme park, you're at the beach, you're at a restaurant, you're walking down the street, you're at a hotel, you're at a condo, it goes on and on. They would have a constitutional right to be able to smoke it and there is nothing that law enforcement could do criminally to be able to prevent that. Ask people who are fleeing places like California, New York, New Jersey, Colorado, where this has been tried and it has, been, it has failed. The other th the refrain that you might hear is that they'll say this is about safety, right? Well, we're doing it because it's safe. Wherever this has been tried, which by the way, why would you give yourself liability protections if you're saying it's safe and you're not gonna be sued, but that's another story. <coughs> But safe, they say, okay, well, this is safe. Everywhere that this has happened, inevitably, it always happens, a black market pops up, right? Because when you regulate a product, you're taxing that product, the price goes higher. So then what happens? A black market comes in and swoops and undercuts the price. But that's not regulated. We don't know what's in that stuff that these kids are smoking. We do know it's high levels of THC, and we'll get into that. But what about the fentanyl crisis that we're fighting? Look at all this stuff that's pouring across our southern border. This could very easily wind up in front of these kids. And one mistake with fentanyl, and it's life ending. 
So we have to be serious about what the implications and ramifications are and the true definition of what freedom means. You know, as a mom, I know there's a lot of mamas out there, you know, that we are, our heads are constantly on a swivel, right? Because you want nothing more than for your children to be protected, to be safe, to be healthy, to live up to their God-given potential. You know, I, I look at where this has been tried and I look at the ramifications of what has happened to our children and, and families. I mean, you look at recreational marijuana in these states that have legalized it, vehicular deaths have gone up, gone up by double digit percentages. I think in Oregon alone, it's gone up 21% in vehicular deaths related to marijuana. So you're gonna see more car crashes out on the roads. That's just inevitable. The other thing I think is very ins insidious and I think it's, it's just disgusting is the way that they package this stuff. Why do they package it like gummy bears and lollipops and Rice Krispie treats and uh, brownies? It has happened, it will happen, where this gets to our kids, they can consume it and it can be potentially life ending. Ask California where this happened. Calls to the hotline, the poison hotline, went up 445% for children under the age of five who were around and became in contact with marijuana. The other thing, too, is when we talk about marijuana, it's very different than what was around in the 1970s. This stuff is 25 to 30 times more potent than what they saw there. The high levels of THC, without a doubt, in the data, in the evidence, in the studies that we're seeing that date back well before this, they're showing that uh, an increased and in a direct link to schizophrenia and psychosis, particularly in a de developing brain, because a developing brain for children is up until the age of 20, or tw in the mid-20s, I should say. I'll never forget, you know, as, as um, you know, First Lady, I have the honor and the privilege of really traveling around the state and taking on a lot of initiatives, and it's, it's very humbling to be able to have the opportunity to do that. And one of the things that um, I've been able to do is work with our children as it pertains to mental health. And I'll never forget an experience that I had when I was down uh, in South Florida at a Baker Act receiving facility. And this is an area where they will bring children um, that are harm to themselves or harm to others. And there's a 72 hour waiting period where they'll get a psychological evaluation. And I was meeting with one of the physicians there uh, and I was talking to him and I said, you know, at the time I wasn't even as well versed as I am now on a lot, of, a lot of the issues pertaining to marijuana and the impacts that it's having on a developing brain. And I said, are you seeing any relation between marijuana usage and psychosis and schizophrenia and he looked at me without hesitation and he said it is undeniable they are seeing it across the scope and so this is something that again we are inviting to the state of florida and i just want to be clear again this is not about freedom this is about corporate greed this is about one company that has invested a hundred million dollars, not because they care about the well-being of the state of Florida, not because they care about the well-being of families or of children. This is a company that wants a return on their investment. That's why they've invested so much. But ask yourselves, if this is truly again about freedom, then why is it that when they wrote this amendment, that they say you can only smoke their product, it is illegal for you to grow it, at your house and they give themselves liability protections and it's not freedom for people who are going to want to go out and enjoy what florida has to offer when this amendment gives basically blanket use for marijuana anywhere across the state so this is an opportunity for us to stand with law enforcement who we'll talk in a second with business owners with parents with people who are appreciative of the direction that Florida is going. And this is our opportunity to stand up and to say no and vote no to Amendment 3. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey out of Brevard County. And I want to start by thanking our First Lady for not only being here with us today, but for all of those initiatives you have been a part of and, and continue to be a part of. We are blessed to have you and Governor DeSantis uh, watching over us here in the state of Florida. So please, a round of applause for Casey DeSantis. 
I also want to thank uh, the sheriffs that are standing on stage with me today for taking time out of their schedules to come here and speak on this very important topic. And even, and even further, the sheriffs that have contacted me and the other sheriffs, we were talking about it in the back room. Um, you know, it's hard to get sheriffs to agree on, on almost anything, but overwhelmingly the sheriffs in Florida, in fact, almost all of us agree that this is bad for Florida. Every one of us standing on this stage sees the impact that this will have. And what I would challenge everyone to do before they, they go to the polls is don't just read the language that's on the ballot because the language on the ballot is very misleading. Read the amendment and then do your research because the evidence is there. They say that past performance predicts performance. Well, all you have to do is look at places like Colorado, Maryland, California, others that have gone down this same path and what you'll see is they regret it. In fact, not only do the legislatures and the governor and the law enforcement regret it, the voters regret it as well. And so the evidence is there for us. And when you look at this amendment, Amendment 3, what you'll see is that it was authored by those that stand to gain the most from it. As you heard our First Lady say, $100 million investment. No one does that unless they expect a massive return on that investment. And that's fine. Listen, I'm all about entrepreneurship, but don't. Don't wrap it up and sell it in a big fraud because that's what this is. This is a big fraud when you look at, they tell, tell us it's about freedom for Florida citizens. Well, if it was about freedom, then you would allow them to have their own. You wouldn't mandate that they have to buy it from you so that you can increase your bottom line. It's very simple. If you talk to sheriffs from other states, what you'll see is that traffic crashes, DUI-related traffic crashes, dramatically increased once they passed that amendment in their own states. Children had greater access to it. Marijuana, right now one of the battles that we face in fighting fentanyl is how often it's used to lace marijuana. So all this amendment does is put Florida citizens at deeper risk from a public safety aspect. And of course with more traffic crashes and more traffic fatalities comes increased insurance rates, vehicle insurance rates, all of those things are connected to this. But the authors of this amendment, they don't care. All they care about is greed, the almighty dollar. And so this is what I would challenge our citizens to do. Don't just look at the ballot language. Read the amendment. Read where it allows for you to go anywhere and smoke marijuana any place you want in the state of Florida. Ask yourself, do you want that? Would you want that around your kid's birthday party at the park? Would you want it while you're sitting in a restaurant? Would you want it while you're walking down the street? All of those things apply here. So we have to take a huge no stance on this. Not just from public safety, we're here, we're here about the public safety aspect of this, but we're also here, each one of us is a citizen of the state of Florida, and each one of us has family here. And we see the impact. I've talked to sheriffs from other states that tell me it was the most detrimental thing they ever did in their respective states. We don't need that. People are moving to Florida because of how awesome it is. Why do we want to mess that up? So if they really thought it was about freedom, they would have said, hey, you can grow your own. Trust me, I don't want to see anybody growing their own marijuana. But if they cared about your freedom, they would have put that in the amendment. But they didn't. This amendment's about one thing. It's about greed. And I refuse, as a sheriff, as a citizen, and as an American, to let greed control our Constitution. I personally believe we, lead, we need to leave the Constitution alone, let it stand on the four corners. But I absolutely am convicted of the fact that this will be bad for Florida. And so we need to make sure we're putting out the vote no word. I'm going to ask Sheriff Waters to come up to his. Uh, uh, his FOP Lodge and this is a uh, beautiful city here of Jacksonville. Sheriff. So I heard somebody ask a question, why are sheriffs being involved in a political discussion? This is more than political. This is public safety. This is about the, our city and our state. I'm going to read over a few bullet points. First of all, I thank everybody for being here, our sheriffs and First Lady, thank you so much for being here with us today. 
and for shedding a light on this bad plan for the state of Florida, for Duval County, for Brevard County, for Clay, for every city, every county in the state of Florida. While Sheriff Ivey talked about the real motivation behind Amendment 3, which is corporate greed, make no mistake about it, and how it would increase crime and put our citizens in harm's way, I want to discuss the, some real impacts and how it would, in real terms, affect the daily way of life for Florida families and children. If this amendment passes, Florida will be the next Colorado and California, and we don't, none of us want that. And our cities and streets will reek just as theirs do. People make fun of that, that, that subject. You know, I've, I was reading some things and people say it's a weak argument, but it's not. I don't know about you, but I don't want uh, my family confronted, my grandkids confronted with walking down the street and the stench of marijuana around every corner. It smells like a skunk. It's terrible. It's horrible. It has zero time, place, and manner for, for, of restrictions. And what does that mean? It means individuals will have a constitutional right to smoke marijuana wherever they want, regardless of who or what is around them. This amendment isn't about smoking pot in your house alone. It's about smoking in restaurants in bars and hotels, smoking in stadiums with 70,000 people or uh, other people on, uh, on a playground next to where our children are playing. It's not healthy for Florida, and it's certainly not safe for our family and kids. So I find it very ironic. You remember the Truth Campaign? Everyone remembers the Truth Campaign and how smoking was bad. Secondhand smoke is horrible. How bad it is for everyone else to smell secondhand smoke and it be around. How is it okay? that we are ready to pollute our state with marijuana smoke. Not only does it smell, does it reek, but it, it's offensive and it, it also gets people high. You can't, it gets you out of your, your right mind and your, your decision-making processes. I'm here to tell you that if Amendment 3 passes, law enforcement will completely lose the ability to enforce the smoking of marijuana in public because it will become a right enshrined in our Constitution. We have to think about that. Floridians. This is our state. We have to protect it. And finally, the last time I checked, we already have legal marijuana, medical marijuana in the state of Florida. They, they have already have 600 stores around the state, and we don't need it everywhere else for recreation. It's just not smart. It's not right. And the state of Florida should not pass this, this amendment. Amendment 3 is a bad plan for Jacksonville. It's a bad plan for Duval County. It's a bad plan for Florida. With that, I'm going to end my time and ask my friend Michelle Cook, Sheriff Michelle Cook from Clay County, to come up and speak to you all. Thank you, Sheriff Waters. Uh, thank you, First Lady, for your continued commitment, you and the governor, to keeping our state free and safe. And to my fellow sheriffs who are here today, Thank you. I, I know for many of us it was a long drive, but uh, this is important. And I will echo what the previous sheriff said. The vast majority of sheriffs in the state of Florida are very much against this. Um, but I want to highlight an issue that was alluded to, but really personally resonates with me. I am the mother of six children. And the idea that increasing the accessibility of marijuana uh, is going to change their future, is going to impact them so detrimentally. Kids will be rushed to the emergency rooms because weed gummies look like candy, and kids will eat them. I have personally seen that. Uh, across the country where marijuana has been legalized, children of all ages um, are inadvertently ingesting the products and they're being treated by ER doctors. The challenge with these products is there's, there's no serum or nothing you can give them. You just have to let it work its way through the body and you have to hope that it doesn't have long-term negative impacts on their health. We cannot make this mistake and put our state's most vulnerable, our children, at risk. While our kids are rushed to emergency rooms because they've ingested what looks like candy, the mega marijuana companies, will be padding their bottom lines as people line up to buy their products. This is about money, this is not about freedom. And I was listening to the First Lady and the other sheriffs speak and I, I thought to myself, I cannot believe I am standing here talking about a company that wants to put marijuana on an amendment for our Constitution. We shouldn't even be here. Uh, and who loses? Who's gonna be the biggest loser in all of this? It's gonna be Florida kids. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak uh, 
briefly on this very important topic, I encourage all of you to go back and circle back with your family, your friends, your neighbors, and make sure that they truly understand that the impact that this amendment, if passed, will have on our communities and our state. Thank you. All right, th thank you. I'm Mark Wilson. I'm the president of Florida's Chamber of Commerce. And I wanted to be here today because on behalf of businesses all over Florida, right, we have 10 million people who work in this state. And I want to be clear, you've heard about corporate greed. I run the Chamber of Commerce for this state. Who wouldn't put $100 million on the table to make $100 billion, right? That's what this is about. But why would the Chamber of Commerce of Florida take a strong position against Amendment 3? Not only do we not want drugs in our Constitution, but I'm flanked today by our First Lady, who's done more for moms and kids over the last several years than anybody I can think of. We've now grown to the 18th. <laughs> Through what our First Lady has done with Hope Florida, we have now grown to the 18th largest economy on the or the 15th largest economy on the planet. And it's largely because of what she's been doing with kids and with families and bringing economic opportunity to communities where it otherwise wouldn't be. And I think we need to acknowledge Florida is growing by 750 people a day and our economy is growing, right? 23 million people, 10 million people work. All of these other states that have been talked about today, I called their state chamber presidents in Colorado, New York, and other states. To a person, they said, stop it while you can. Not one state said that this was a good idea. You've heard all the arguments today. Make no mistake, the only people who win from Amendment 3 are the people who grow drugs and sell drugs. That's it. The 23 million of us that are going to have to put up with it, we're the ones who lose. And so let me just, let me end with this. The Florida Chamber of Commerce has launched a big campaign trying to get all 10 million people in Florida who work, many of whom are parents or grandparents, they know that this is bad for kids and this is bad for families. These are people who work for our companies. This would be a horrible thing for Florida's economy. And our law enforcement, without safer communities, without safer families, we don't have a business community and we don't have a state. So this is an amendment that has to be beat. The Florida Chamber of Commerce will do anything we can to stop Amendment 3 from passing and from drugs going into the Constitution. So, First Lady, thank you for your leadership. To the Florida Sheriff's Association and those in law enforcement who are standing on the front lines every day, thank you so much for what you do. We have to go defeat this bad amendment. Thank you. So I'll close out with just uh, echoing what's been said up here today, and that is please go, go read the full language of this amendment. Uh, if you have not already, go read it. If you have already, then you already know you're voting no against this. Um, this, is, this is bad for Florida, and we, we cannot have it happening here so that we're following other states. Listen, other states follow Florida. Let's, let's make sure we continue in the leadership that's going to protect our children. Let's make sure that we're continuing the leadership that's going to protect our state and the great name we have here. I want to I want to thank uh, Sheriff Chitwood, Sheriff Staley, and Sheriff Leeper for being here with us. Um, Sheriff um, Harrison, thank you, thank you guys for uh, attending as well. And as I said, I think we um, speak for almost every sheriff in the state of Florida when we tell you that this is bad for public safety. So thank you for being here today. And again, another uh, round of applause for our first lady who does so much for us. Thank you guys.